Uh, I started playing drums when I was nine. I joined my first band when I was 11. I started drinking Newcastle Brown Ale when I was 12. Uh, I joined a band with Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols in 1979 called Public Image Limited. Spent five years with that band, then bounced into a band called Killing Joke, Ministry, Nine Inch Nails. I have a Grammy for my work on a track called Wish. I'm in the head like a whole video. I have my own label called Invisible Records. We've released 350 albums since 1988. And no, I won't listen to your demo. I will fucking burn it. <laughs> That's not true. Yes, it is. Um, I have my own band, Pig Face which has about 500 different members in it, including Flea from the Chili Peppers, Danny Carey from Tool, and 498 other people. Uh, I started teaching 16 years ago. Um, I'm now the music business coordinator at a beautiful university called Millican in Decatur, Illinois. Uh, and I've written uh, three books about the music business. I'm working on my fourth. I've got four kids, all boys. <laughs> and I am the shittiest DJ you will ever find. I, if you're interested, I could destroy your wedding. I could do <laughs> And that's all about truth in advertising, because I've been told you that you can't come up to me halfway through your wedding and go, you're destroying the wedding. I'll be like, yeah, told you. So, this is how to make an extra 100K. Everything is changing all the time. That's not my quote, that's Heraclitus, right? Everything has always been changing. Um, no sooner does a platform emerge than it changes. No sooner do we start writing about Meerkat or Periscope or Tidal. It just keeps changing all the time. The world's gone crazy. Dunkin' Donuts are making chicken sandwiches. <laughs> Burger King are making donut holes. It's all gone absolutely mad. Uh, touring has gone through the roof. Right? It's not all silly stuff with me. There's information in here. Th three of my 140 slides are really good. Um, so, if you're not touring, you're fucked. Tour. That's the only place there's money left anymore. This is Bob Lefsetz in his column last week. The road is black and white. Either you can sell tickets or you can't. That's the, uh, the measure of success. Experience is everything. It's less sexy than working at a label, but you have more power. You build careers on the road, not on streaming services. If only there was a book that somebody had written about you. Yes, Martin Atkins, Tour Smart. Ten years ago, um, I just released the prequel to Tour Smart called Band Smart, which I have to tell you is available in the lobby. Uh, my third book is called Welcome to the Music Business. You're fucked. Which is also a terrific t-shirt. Uh, we got Cassette Store Day now. It's insane. Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are doing their own show, and people are having a great time coming up with interesting taglines. Let's get baking. Because you see, it's not, not, yeah. <laughs> Pot luck. It's like, oh, come on. I'm actually not sure who's done the most jail time. Um, but we should also remember today the anniversary in 1975 of the release of Born to Run, Bruce Springsteen. So that's a great message for you guys, right? Even if you're totally shit, you can build a career that will last for ages. <laughs> I was talking to Kevin Bruder earlier in the green room and he said, Oh, you're going to uh, pay homage to Bruce Springsteen. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay homage to Bruce fucking Springsteen. <laughs> so, 
Okay, let's get into it. How to make an extra 100K. Seriously, what is the main problem facing us all? How many artists are here in this room? Wow, okay. So perhaps, well, did nobody have the strategy of coming to CD Baby and handing out LSD-laced cookies and sending all of your competition to hospital? Come on! You've got to think differently. So, what about, what about streaming? Pharrell made just $25,000 from 25 million plays of Happy on Pandora. Do the math. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Except I lied. He made $25,000 from 50 million plays. It's kind of outrageous, except I lied. He made $12,500. Except I lied. He made just 6300 from 50 million plays. Hey, guys, my screen went out, just so you know. Came back. Thank you. Except I lied again. He only made $6,300 from 150 million plays of Happy. My point is this. If my first slide was horrible, my last slide is 10 times horrible. Hey, Zach. If we're spending our time, as some of us do at these conferences, go, we've, we've come up with a way to get an extra 0.5 of a percent on every 15 plays. What the fuck does that matter anyway? If the first slide is bad, and it was 10 times better than my last slide, you making things 2% better doesn't matter a fuck. It doesn't. And here's the thing. Pittiness and pettiness is the enemy of creativity. I can run the shit out of an Excel spreadsheet. Like, that is my poetry right there. I make things happen that shouldn't. But we can't turn ourselves into accountants, unless we're accountants. But most of us aren't. We're creative motherfuckers. And once we start trying to find the extra shaved piece of the corner of a dollar bill that somebody already put in the shredder, and we're going through the ashes of the money that's left, we're fucked. Wow got a little bit quiet. <laughs> All right, let's look at some simple stuff. Fear of selling. Get over it, right? I'm a business guy, but I'm an artist, and I feel in myself a lot the difficulty sometimes of setting up my wares at my booth and selling, right? Because when you put stuff out in front of you, you're giving people the opportunity to mm, walk by. And that hurts. Every person that walks by is like a stab in the, I was going to say testicles, but I won't. <laughs> but you just have to. I found myself, I was doing an event for Dean Guitars down in Florida, and I said to my friend, should I bring my merch in? Do you think I'll sell any? And he said, well, you won't sell any if you leave it in the car. And I realized I was just trying to protect myself from putting out my wares and selling them and being disappointed when people walk by. Just get over that shit. Roll your shirts. <laughs> I see people at a really high level. Did anybody just punch anybody else like their partner in the back? I fucking told you we should roll the shirt. <laughs> Who wants to roll? Who likes rolling shirts? Nobody! But if you're lucky enough to have 12 people in line after your event, right, and you've got a box of shirts, people want to talk to you. They don't want to watch you going through extra, uh, extra large. There's, there's two in here somewhere. Now the fuck it isn't. And now you've just lost that sale. And the two people at the back of the line are like, what the hell is going on? I thought this guy was great on stage, but he's obviously a fucking idiot. <laughs> and we've got a babysitter. I've got to be up for work at five in the morning. Screw this. So you lost the sale that was right in front of you, and you just lost two people in the back who just went home. 
So you're going to sell one extra shirt per show. $20. See, it's fucking multimedia experience. <laughs> That's 20 extra dollars for the extra shirt. Less confusion. One shirt every two events. I'm not just making stuff up. This is tiny little stuff that will build up. Okay. We're going to be here till midnight, right? 99,970 to go. Tip jar. I forget this. My students remembered the tip jar, and they called it the gin fund, right? Artists, do you all have a tip jar at your booth? Okay. I'll take that as a probably not. People like to tip. You have to put something interesting on your tip jar. Sexy people tip. Every time you tip, God saves a kitten. Help save the kitties. You need to, of course, make these phrases work for your band, your brand. For me, it would be every time you tip, we'll, we'll cut the head off a kitten in the back. We need your money for drugs and oversized condoms. Be ambitious. $15 a night from your tip jar. Have a digital tip jar. There's all kinds of apps out there. Have a choice of t-shirts. More choice equals more sales. I know lots of bands who don't have any merch. I, I know lots of bands who yeah, we've got a shirt. You can't have a shirt. You've got to give people a choice. Do you see the shirts I have out there? Welcome to the music business. You're fucked. Uh, there's one in red. Uh, get the fuck out of bed coffee. Thank you. And education is the next punk rock. Whatever, right? So you give people a choice. You sell more. That's $40. Free is the new black. But be smart about it. Anybody here have a problem with giving your shit away? One person in the back, he just frightened to say so. Um, here's the thing. You need to give away your songs all the time and not your shit songs that were recorded poorly at last night's live event where the guitarist was drunk. You need to give away your very best songs all the time. If I was a bakery, maybe i make some expensive smoked salmon thing, Right? that costs a lot of money. So I don't want to give it away. But I've got some bagel chips that nobody really liked four days ago, and they've gone a little bit stale. And then Steve dropped the tray and they fell on the floor, and now the stale bagel chips with some cat hair. <laughs> you can't give that away either. Because that's the end of your relationship with anybody who tastes one. You've got to give away your best shit all the time. That's the rule. I know it's difficult. I know the ins and outs of it. It's time to remove the protective cup. <laughs> 80s business is this, right? You're protecting your shit. It's not that time anymore. You have to put your arms to the side, give somebody a hammer, and ask them not to smash you in the crotch with the hammer. And you might think, I've got it, I've got it. My grandma's got this little toffee hammer. I'll do that. I'll follow the idea that Martin's coming up with, but we'll get around the potential danger to our crotches by using this tiny toffee hammer. Now that's a challenge. If you were to do that to me, I would kill you with that tiny toffee hammer. The bigger the hammer you give somebody the less likely they are to smash you in the crotch with it. I mean, you could give me a sledgehammer, I'll be like, ha, 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 here we go. <laughs> no, I can't, mate. Let's have a beer. Because you're selling trust, relationships. You're opening yourself up. I don't just talk about this stuff. Uh, I'm giving away all kinds of shit out there at my booth. Um, if you want to take a quick picture of that, 
That's Welcome to the Music Business, You're Fucked. Uh, you could go download it. Everybody got it? Well, great! No, uh, no. <laughs> but this free stuff is difficult. Don't give up on this free stuff. Don't be challenged by it. It just is what it is. The thing that you need from somebody when you give them your awesome shit is their time. You still need a gift back of their most valuable time. I have a nice piece on uh, NPR, the Martin Atkins Minute, that talks about the Blackberry Jam Scam. Uh, if you want to take the time to find that, you'll be crying. But it's really good. Learn how to screen print. Who here knows how to screen print? <laughs> great. Right? There are great services outside who will print pretty cheaply for you, but not as cheaply as you can print yourself. And I think more importantly, not in as small quantities as you need to print. When you come across a design, because you've made 10, right? The one that sells a lot, have one of these companies print a ton of them. But when you print yourself, you can print three shirts for tomorrow night's gig. You don't need the fourth shirt until you've sold the third one. I've got designs I made, I didn't sell any didn't sell a fucking shirt. Just happy that I didn't order a gross of them. So when you make your own shirts, it's easy for you to give it away. You can make a shirt for $2.50. If you give that one away instead of the $7 shirt, you're saving $4.50 a shirt. If you give away three shirts per event, and you should, that's $13.50. Make sense? Watch out for your assets. What's the word for the word made up of the first letters of the names of a word that it's made up by? <laughs> I've, got to learn, I've got to remember that shit. <laughs> Always have something else to sell. Always have something else to sell. It doesn't work if you've got one song or one shirt. You could give somebody something and now you're screwed. If you accept a free gift from me, you are so fucked. I've got 50 shirts. The fourth book is on the way. 350 albums. Paying the producer's home instead of paying for studio time. Anybody done that? My friend Kimberly Freeman from One Eye Doll does that all the time. And now there's a waiting list of producers who want her to come to the house because she generates so much publicity for them. $3,000. Install a jacuzzi. Oh, what's going on? Are these my slides? Install a jacuzzi. Go to culinary school. Brew amazing beer. Oh. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Buy some extra beds. What is, what is all this about? These are the reasons things will be better two years from now. I met this woman uh, at a conference, and she had this tattered notebook with her. And she said, well, at least I know, Martin, my son will be protected wherever he goes. I'm like, what is this, Lord of the fucking Rings? <laughs> but she did all of those things. She converted her basement. She knew her son was going to go into music and tour, and she knew he'd be out there in the world unprotected. So she converted her basement, put in extra beds. I think her husband made some beer. There was no weed involved in this story. Um, they put screaming Wi-Fi and a laundry down there, and they invited every band within a very broad range, like her son's tastes were leading him, to come and stay with them. And over the course of two years, put hundreds of names of people that they now had a relationship with uh, in this book that will protect her son. And I think sometimes um, we forget we're so desperate to get to Iceland, Australia, New York City, Los Angeles, wherever. We forget that we are where we are and we have the assets that we have. And whilst we're sitting here thinking, if only I could get to New York, fuck. There's a band in New York thinking, fuck, well, how, how can we do something in Nashville? And if you're online, bless you. Is that it? Sometimes it's threes. Okay. Well, we're all with you anyway. Um, 
So this band, maybe they're online going, oh, fuck, Nashville, hold on a minute. There's an interesting band over here doing this, and their concerts look great. But look at this other crazy band. They're growing their own weed. The bass player's brewing beer. The, their girlfriends are in the jacuzzi. Somebody went to culinary school. Let's go there. Just start inviting people to come and stay with you and build up your network before you risk everything and go out on the road because touring is surely warfare, right? You have to stay... I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. You've got to stay on top of the newest technology. There's so many technology companies out there. I think that echoes exactly what I'm saying. You must stay on top of the... Of the... Really? Who? Come on. Oh, is that me? Oh, shit. Yeah, hello. No, I'm doing it. I'm doing a presentation. Yeah, it's the hilarious Starsky and Hutch phone gag. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they could have laughed a bit more, actually. Yeah. Okay, bye. Ciao. Okay. We got off track a little bit there. Are we going back into it? Uh, we were at $98.50 a show. Ching, thanks. <laughs> Stop playing where your fans aren't. People do that all the time. Where are we going? We're going to LA. Why? New York City, here we come. No, you don't. Nobody in New York gives a fuck. <laughs> Go where you're find out. My goodness, you can track all of this data. When you give stuff away for free, right, you download my book, you better give me your zip code, right? Metallica. Oh, what are Metallica doing on my slideshow? Metallica and Bruce Springsteen, what am I doing? Um, they're working with Spotify. They look at their playlist. Their set changes each night uh, to satisfy each market. What, the, what Metallica songs they're listening to the most. I mean, we don't need to completely pander to our fans, but it's not a terrible idea, is it? Stop making albums, make singles, EPs, live albums, do covers. Covers get you revenue on YouTube. And I think some artists are like, well, we don't want to do covers, we're just totally original, and we're immersed in our own originality. You know how you can illustrate your originality? is by doing a fucking cover. Does anybody remember, uh, was it Jocko Homo by Devo? Holy fucking shit, they did uh, Satisfaction. And the only thing that was missing from that equation, because I knew Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, was like, this is fucking Devo, motherfucker. Don't be frightened of showing yourself by doing a cover. It's also so much revenue, you wouldn't believe it. You are your own chain store. We used to pay for space at, at, at record stores coming up in the 90s with, with my label. You are your own chain store now. You need 30 minutes of sell time after your show. If a bar closes at 2, they'll get you to play to 2. Unless you know going in, you need half an hour of sell time afterwards. Right? So you play till 1.30. Play that game. You need your sell time after the show. That's an extra three items. That's an extra $30. You make live albums. You make books. Other shit. An extra $30. I have my own brand of coffee outside. Soon to be available in Japan. Are you fucking kidding me? Have other items to sell. I have my own voodoo doll. <laughs> I was going to say, I have my own pet Bob Boylan, and he comes with his own voodoo doll. <laughs> and this girl in New Orleans started making voodoo dolls for him. I'm like, well, that's fucking ridiculous. And then people started posting on Instagram, we're having cocktails with Martin Atkins. I'm like, I don't remember this. I've got to stop drinking. I don't remember. And they were having cocktails with my voodoo doll. So now there's like 400 of my voodoo dolls out there. I'm just praying that people don't start like Smashing me in the crotch with a hammer. 
Okay, we've added shirts. We've added other items. We've added the time to sell. We've sped up the process of selling. We've increased the choices. We've increased the grooviness and more for an equivalent of $163.50 per show. Yeah. Cha-ching. Thank you. Yeah, I was part of uh, Martin Atkins' uh, cha-ching chorus, actually, in Nashville. Thank you. How do we get this to add up and make a difference? Well, I'd suggest that. Book your fucking self. There's nothing wrong with agents. You probably don't need one at the beginning. No one's going to spend as much time as you working on you. I take gigs for nothing still to open up opportunities. I was just in Brasilia, South America. Had a blast. Five more countries want me to go and speak. Sometimes there are situations that an agent wouldn't agree to because you can't commission nothing. You can't always commission opportunity. You book yourself, you know how important it is for you to play Cleveland or not to have a night off, whatever it is. Twelve events a week. We did two on Thursday. I did an event for Naris in the afternoon and I did my own event in the evening. When TourSmart first came out, I was doing three or four events a day. Right? Anybody who's running a spreadsheet, it's called the multiplier. You do seven shows a week, your multiplier is seven. You do four shows a day, your multiplier is 28. Does not make a difference over a week? Well, it does, but not really. Over the course of a year, holy shit, does that stuff add up. What was that? From nowhere. Um, if you're serious about this, give up your apartment. Give up your house for a year. You should be living out of a van anyway if you're serious. If you're doing 12 shows a week, why do you need just to be sending money home and fielding phone calls? There's a leak. The cat's escaped. If you're going to do it, do it. That's an extra 25K right there. Is that 100K? No, it's all right. You can say, no, we've been hoodwinked. Here's how you get it to 100K. You do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And that's different for everybody. Stop trying to succeed in the music business, 1990. It's fucking 2018. Who should be the next member of your team? Guitarist. What? Another guitarist. The guitarist in the audience are like, yeah, that sounds uh, perfectly reasonable. <laughs> three, three guitarists. Well, this sound guy called me up last week. He's like, here's a good one for you, Martin. When there are more guitars on stage than people in the audience, you've got a problem. <laughs> next member of your team a lobbyist or a grant writer you know I go to all these conferences you know the new term two words you should know export ready and what that does it, it changes you from a creative person in a band trying to make it to a business entity that government entities are interested in helping there's money to help businesses that are exporting. Because when you export, you sell stuff and you bring money and opportunity back. And governments like that. They don't understand funding bans and creative business, but they understand import, export. Technical ability. Oh. Before you spend another hour practicing on your instrument, whatever it is. Think about adding five other skills to your skill set. Get better at social media. Get better at meeting people and interacting. I'm shy as fuck. I have to work at that stuff. Everybody has to work at that stuff. But that's a part. That's a part of becoming successful. It's not just like how good you are on your five-string fretless bass. This nine-year-old guitarist has over a million views on YouTube. He's just about to meet 
Ozzy Osbourne on the Ellen DeGeneres show. This <laughs> seven-year-old drummer has 13 million views. So anything that you're good at, before you try and be better at doing that thing, just type into your computer, whatever that is, followed by child prodigy. <laughs> Within minutes, you'll be crying into your laptop. <laughs> There's a five-year-old kid somewhere who's way better or whatever you do than you. And you might say, huh, you made some good points, Martin, but you've lost me here. This doesn't apply to me because I'm a fucking pilot. Yeah. So is this five-year-old kid from China. <laughs> can we all agree here today, hands in the air or a big shout of yes, can we be more awesome than a pasta restaurant? Can we? Okay, that was not a trap. Yes, it was. The Olive Garden in Chicago, I know you might call me on the pasta restaurant aspect of the Olive Garden. They did a thing where if you go and eat there, they'll watch your kids for two hours. Okay, artists. So how's that going to work for your next gig? How are you going to be more awesome than a pasta restaurant? Because all I see is most artists on the internet going, where were you? We really worked up hard on our whatever, Backman Turner Overdrive cover set. Nobody showed up. Stop shouting at your fans. Do your fans fucking laundry. If your fans don't have any money and they can't get to the show, get all the gear out the van, go pick them up. You're just creating stories for the future. You're creating fans for the future. And those people will go on the internet and go, I don't have any money. The lead singer saw that I didn't have any money. They came and picked me up in the van. Bought me a beer. People never forget that shit. That's the business we're in. Story business. Stop being shit. Start being awesome. Oh, hey, that's that. Uh, that's the. Go listen to my Blackberry Jam scam on uh, the All Songs Considered thing. Uh, I'm particularly proud of that. There's a couple of those I'm really proud of, actually. Okay, you want some like fast paced advice for the last 20 minutes? Get the fuck out of bed. Get the fuck out of bed. Here's the deal. If you're up at five and your arch enemy, ironically the lead singer from a band called Arch Enemy, who might be about to sue me, gets up at ten, you're five hours ahead of the competition. And there's no competition, really. We're all in this swirling world of shit together, right? But let's say we're in competition. Five hours isn't much, but at the end of a week, you're 35 hours ahead. At the end of a month, you are glancing at the... Okay, 140 hours. At the end of a year, you're 1,076 days. So if you're looking to succeed, if you really want to know the magic ingredient of all of this, it's you. Wow, I felt like I needed a xylophone. Did anybody else feel that? That would have been great. No fucking xylophone. This guy sucks. <laughs> Get the fuck out of bed. I love this as well. My dad gave me this one. Thank you, dad. You'll make more friends in two months being interested in other people than you'll make in two years trying to get other people interested in you. Dale Carnegie, 1940-something. That is the internet. That's the world. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares about anything that's important to you more than you do. People care about what's important to them. Ooh, always be nice to everyone. Uh, I've been an asshole. I was in bands in the 80s. I was an asshole. 
don't be an asshole to anybody. Why do we emulate that behavior in others that we see? Because we think, oh, that's what success looks like. It might be what success looks like for a minute, but everybody's just waiting for those people to fuck up so they can wave on the way down. Don't do that. You know who I was an asshole to and got into a fight with? Whew, good job it was nobody important. It was just Kevin Lyman who owns the Warp Tour before he started the Warp Tour. And as we were punching each other, I remember thinking, this might not be the best idea, Martin. <laughs> I was really lucky. Uh, I did a conference maybe 15 years ago in New York, and I was on a panel with Kevin, touring, how to tour. And I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. There was this tension between us. And I stood up in front of 600 people at the Old Ritz in New York. I said, look, before we go any further, I just have to take the time to apologize to Kevin Lyman for being an absolute shitbag 25 years ago. I'm really sorry. And I'm friends with Kevin now, but whoever you are an asshole to, you probably won't be as lucky as I was to be able to apologize in a Disney kind of way in front of a whole room full of people and salvage that relationship. So just always be nice to everyone. And the rule is, be the nicest to the person with the least reason for you to be nice to them. You can't be strategic. Here's the good thing. Sometimes it's just a smile, right? Or if you're in your car, let somebody get out of some horrifying intersection. Just be nice. You want the huge stuff? The really big stuff? <laughs> okay. How do you put 20,000 fans in a stadium? One at a time. Right. Thanks. Security, can we get this? Get. It seems so mysterious. And there are people in the business who are like, oh, it's a thing. We've got to let me talk to my. We can, right? Managers and labels sometimes perpetuate this myth that there's a green button behind the curtain. There isn't. It's just hard work. It's just tons and tons of hard work, nine days a week, 28 hours a day, which is fine with me because I love this shit. And if you love this shit too, it will be fine with you. The time goes really quickly. But yeah. Each one of us could make 10 friends today. Like, otherwise, why the fuck else are we here? You could make 20 or 30 if you really want to work at it. You just do that. Remember that multiplier? There's 365 days in a year. Go to other people's concerts. Support the scene before you ask the scene to support you. There's just small stuff plus time. That's how you get the huge stuff. And if somebody's selling you a shortcut to success, punch them in the face and then punch yourself in the face. Because <laughs> there isn't one and there shouldn't be, right? There's, when I was on, well, I, 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 uh, that doesn't work. I was going to say when I was on American Bandstand, we had no clue. I didn't know where I was and we had no idea what American Bandstand was and we didn't know who Dick Clark was. So that example doesn't work. But you need to pay your dues to get that electrical feeling. We're like, I can't believe I'm on stage at Newcastle City Hall where I went to see Gary Glitter, the Alex Harvey Band, the Stranglers, all kinds of amazing. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm, I was seeing myself through my own eyes 10 years earlier. Ah. You have to pay your dues. There's no smash and grab anymore. I think my dad said to me, You've got two years at this game, Martin. Well, I'm, I'm 40 years in. You know, I would have treated this a little bit differently if I'd known I was on a 40-year career path or 50-year career path. Started playing drums when I was nine. So the way to really make an extra 100 grand to stop trying to do that. 
Give me all your money. No, come on. <laughs> Help somebody else. Help somebody else. And that's how you'll get yours. I've got so many stories that confirm that approach. You'd be surprised. I don't have time to go into them. You just let go of that shit and stuff will come to you. It's not one thing. 300 at least. You could say it's 420,000. The significant, forget the 420. You fucking pothead motherfuckers. <laughs> the significance of 420,000 is if you don't spay a cat, they say within two years there'll be 420,000 extra cats because of the one cat that you didn't spay, didn't fix. That one little action or the lack of that one tiny action causes all this stuff. My kids said to me, my two eldest, they're like, we get this marketing thing, Dad. We got it. It's like being a zombie. A zombie bites a person. Now there's two zombies. And those two zombies bite two more people. There's four fucking zombies. And uh, <laughs> those four zombies bite four more. There's eight fucking zombies. Now, of course, they're completely infatuated with zombies, but you get the point. So what I want you to think about is this new approach. You need to be a kitten that hasn't been fixed and is a zombie. That's going to be my next book. Not fixed, not fixed. The attack of the not fixed zombie kittens. Martin Atkins. Um, my booth is just outside. And I'm happy to, I was talking to a bunch of people yesterday. I'm happy to puke ideas on you and maybe help you through any roadblocks. As I said, I've been doing this stuff since I was 11. My great-grandfather was an advanced man for the circus. Um, so this stuff really is in my blood, and I'm, I'm happy to help you with it. Lastly, um, there's an interesting origin to this thing that I do. Um, uh, because I can screen print, just like a bunch of you, um, I put flies on my suits, which you might not see in the light. Um, I screen printed glow-in-the-dark. Oh, we reissued some vinyl. And that's a glow-in-the-dark sleeve. Oh, can anybody turn all the lights off magically? Or not. I mean, that's fine as well. <laughs> it's, not, it's not quite as dramatic when all the lights stay on and I'm ignored. Like, yeah. But imagine... It also, this also bursts into flames, but I can't do... Oh, 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 oh. oh. I think that's a round of applause, isn't it? But, so, we're looking at numbers, right? We're all thinking about numbers. I sell 300 of those for 60 apiece because it's a double album. It's signed, hand-screened, hand screened, numbered, glow-in-the-dark artwork. That's $18,000. Do you know how many streams you need to make $18,000? Yeah, four and a half million. I'm not saying don't stream, you need to stream, but making something cool like that might attract the activity and create the story that creates traction online that gets you to four and a half million streams. You need to do both. The other thing I did was I screen printed, I'll just show you this because I'm getting low on time. I screen printed, oh wow, it smells so nice. Yeah, be careful. It gets scary from now. A scratch and sniff white vinyl blueberry seven inch. Ooh. So now we're bypassing the journalists and the opinions and the reviews. What's it sound like? Fuck off. It's blueberry. So 
as hard as it is, in fact, as impossible as it is to sell music, right? If everybody in this room imagines smelling blueberries, right? Can you imagine that for a moment? I can't sell you music, but I could sell the shit out of some blueberry muffins right now, couldn't I? <laughs> Looks like a slide. It's like a stroboscopic. There's naked women, there's snakes, there's people doing drugs. Look at the blueberries. Look at the screen. But here's what's interesting to me, is not trying to sell you blueberry muffins. It's to give out blueberry muffins. God. Don't be embarrassed. It's been a long day. Well, yeah! Oh, yes! Wow. Well, there's no... I can, yeah. Don't put, your, don't put your hand up 40 rows back. You're going to give me a fucking hernia. <laughs> Could I have some assistance with some muffins, please? So, I, eyes front, I'm not going to be liable for somebody losing an eye. Which. Oh! Yes! So here's an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. Here's an interesting thing. We're just creating a story. Unfortunately, you need some? We're just creating a story. They did an experiment. Somebody, yeah, no, don't be embarrassed to crawl around on the floor and pick up. <laughs> They did. Well, they did a story. Somebody bought 200 items off of eBay for $200. And then asked a writer to write a story about each object. Like, I'll never forget grandma's milk jug, right? And then they sold those same 200 items for $8,000. Right? We need to think about creating an experience number one, and a story number two. So now everybody's going to be, Martin Atkins, blueberry muffins. I'm a fuck, I play drums with Johnny Rotten, I've got a Grammy, motherfuckers. <laughs> but, and just to, I don't want to sound like self-serving or, or asking for, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You know, Sometimes people don't understand the effort that goes into like a, a, a presentation like this. Last night in the hotel, it's me, I've got, I've got my slides together, and I'm there, I'm opening up these bags of muffins, masturbating into the muffins, <laughs> and then and sealing them, sealing those bags. Oh, come on. Not every bag. Not every bag. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> About ten. About ten, bags. ten bags. Uh that's me on Twitter, Martine, four E's, just like the old days. See, that's a little 80s drug joke. <laughs> and Flowers Fight for Sunshine is me on Instagram. Uh, thanks to CD Baby for putting on a fucking awesome event, right? <laughs> Those guys are so nice. I did my first project with uh, disc makers in 1983. I went to their pressing plant in Philadelphia and made a four-song, 12-inch vinyl. 
um, they all care so much about what we're all doing and what you guys are doing and helping. Um, I want to thank my uh, students and graduates from Millican University who are here helping me, without whom we wouldn't have been able to bombard you with muffins and... <laughs> Last bag. This feels like a definite not non master <laughs> Boom. Hey, thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>